Coming up, the world is running out of Bonanza rudder vaders and the material to make them. New challenge to keep them flying. It's a big party here at home base. We show you around town to see what there is to do in Frederick, Maryland around our flight. Plus, it's like getting the keys to a race car, flying the extra 330 SC. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Hard to believe it, but the biggest leap forward for protecting your freedom to fly turns two this week. So far, nearly 50,000 pilots are taking advantage of it. Basic Med went into effect May 1st, 2017. AOPA worked for years to reform the medical certification process, and this was a major advocacy win led by your association. When AOPA President Mark Baker came on board, he directed our government affairs team to work with Congress and the FAA to get this done, and they did. You know, the basic med is something that I'm really proud of this organization for what it was able to accomplish with the pilot community by speaking up and getting the law that, you know, now two years later, 50,000 or nearly 50,000 people are flying under basic med. Uh, it should make us all proud that we're able to change the law, get it done, get the FAA to get it up to speed, and today, two years later, 50,000 aviators are using this principle of how you can comply with your medical. With the two-year mark comes the need for early adopters to retake the online medical education course, and we've got information to walk you through the renewal process on our website. So this was one of the biggest wins. Uh, in was. my 28, ugh, 28 years here, <laughs> you've been here a little longer. Right. But we worked really hard on this, I and in fact, did. a lot of people don't know, but we, we took a run at this four times previously right. before we actually succeeded. So this was right. our fifth time, so we, we are tenacious. We, you, yes, we are tenacious and it's been really successful as evidenced by 50,000 pilots taking advantage of it. And, and for many of them, it's just a much better solution and without having to do their special agents this time after time after time again, um, it's, it's, it's a good deal for a lot of pilots. Big win. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping an older airplane in the air can be tough. It's often hard to find parts, but it's even worse when you can't get the source material anymore. That's the case for our beloved Bonanzas and Barons. Their tails are skinned with magnesium. Now, magnesium corrodes easily. Any flaws in the paint and the tail skin will have to be replaced quickly. But this type of magnesium has become extraordinarily rare and expensive. For Barons and straight tail Bonanzas, you can use aluminum. But for V-tail Bonanzas, there is no alternative. The, the heavier the weight of the aft end, of course, the more difficulty you'll have with the balancing. So that's one of the reasons that Beechcraft used magnesium. And then the balance, the control balance itself to protect it right. against flutter is, is an issue. It, it's difficult to get uh, different types of materials to achieve the same control flutter protection. But the American Bonanza Society is tackling this head on. The ABS Air Safety Foundation this week announced two large cash prizes to encourage the design of a new rudder vader skin or control surface replacement and for an STC approved for VTAIL Bonanzas. One of the things that uh, we think we can do is to spur development of alternatives uh, created by industry and approved by the FAA that would provide uh, a different way to uh, get the proper control balance and to keep this legacy fleet flying longer. The two prizes total $200,000. The countdown continues. AOPA's grand 80th anniversary fly-in to Frederick, Maryland is next weekend. There will be a ton of things to do at the event itself, but it's also worth taking some time to visit the sites around Frederick area. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran gives us an overview of what you should see when you're here. When you touch down at Frederick's airport, one of the first things to see is the home of your association. We'll be offering tours of the headquarters here a chance to see where we work hard every day to protect your freedom to fly. If you come in, don't miss the chance to reflect on 80 years of AOPA at the new museum. We have a variety of artifacts, including the original member roster and some historic photos. Welcome to downtown Frederick. It's just a few minutes from the airport, and there really is something for everyone here. There's a restaurant for every taste here, from sushi at Lazy Fish to ribs at Black Hog. If craft beer is your thing, 
Frederick has an abundance of breweries. Monocacy Brewery will be serving up local beer at the Flightline Cookout on Friday night. If you want to see where the magic happens, the brewery and tasting room are also near downtown Frederick. And once you've filled up on delicious food and drink, there's a lot to see. You can take a stroll along Carroll Creek to Baker Park and take in the clustered spires Frederick is famous for, created by the steeples of the historic churches. For history buffs, there's an abundance to see. One notable site is the burial site of Francis Scott Key, the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. Key is laid to rest at the Mount Olivet Cemetery. You can also check out the National Museum of Civil War Medicine, where you can learn about medical, surgical, and nursing practices during the Civil War. And another significant Civil War site is nearby. Check out the Monocacy National Battlefield, a short drive outside Frederick. The battle here was not the largest of the war, but it was significant, known as the battle that saved Washington. And this is just the beginning of all there is to do in the region. Within an hour drive or flight of Frederick, there's an abundance to explore. No matter how much time you have, Frederick and the capital region are here to please. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. Just a reminder, we have some incredible learning opportunities for you at the Fly-In. There are workshops and seminars on many subjects. Check out the website for more information and to register. Also, we are expecting to sell out of the tickets for the Flightline Cookout, and we want you to be there, so get your tickets early for this all-you-can-eat dinner. And something very special during that Flightline Cookout, a tribute to the upcoming 75th D-Day anniversary. Paratroopers in World War II uniforms and using round parachutes will jump from C-47 Skytrains and DC-3s in front of the Flightline crowd. The aircraft are from the D-Day Squadron and the paratroopers from the Liberty Jump Team. The aircraft are on their way to New York to prepare to fly to Europe to participate in D-Day anniversary commemorations. You can find out more about the D-Day Squadron at this website. D-Day marked the beginning of the end of World War II, of course. The final cessation of hostilities came a little more than a year later when the Japanese surrendered in ceremonies aboard the battleship USS Missouri and Tokyo Bay. The ceremonies had a massive show of force, including a flyover formation of, get this, 525 B-29s organized by General Curtis LeMay. That formation was led by Lieutenant Colonel Bob Vaucher. And LeMay, uh arranged it so that every service of old B-29 was in the air that day mm. over the battleship Missouri. I, I had to have uh, uh, all of these airplanes ready sequentially to follow, follow me in. And with that as experience, Lieutenant Colonel Vaucher has agreed to be our honorary air boss for next year's Arsenal of Democracy flyover of Washington, D.C. You're going to be involved in the briefing of the pilots. So what, what are you going to say to the pilots uh, that day as they prepare to fly these airplanes over Washington, D.C. Uh, on the day commemor commemorating uh, the end of the war in Europe? Get in line and stay in line. <laughs> He's amazing. 100 years old. Oh, my goodness. I saw that on social media right. this week that you posted that you had the opportunity to talk with him. That's amazing. And, and what a special treat to have him as a part of this celebration. Right. Yeah. We we're really happy that uh, he came, came by. And uh, I hope I'm in that good a shape when I'm 100, i got to tell you. Uh, absolutely. AOPA's You Can Fly Academy was full of activity earlier this week. Over 40 high school teachers came to learn how to teach the high school aviation STEM curriculum to ninth graders. The teachers got to practice some of the hands-on activities the students will experience. Right now, 165 schools are signed up to use the curriculum, and so far, the teachers love it. As a teacher, I couldn't ask for something better. It's literally laid out everything you could possibly want in a very user-friendly way. I wish it just came with a bow on it. It's, it's pretty perfect. <laughs> the high school initiative is just one part of AOPA's You Can Fly program, our initiative to build the pilot community. Everything that You Can Fly does is funded through generous donations to the AOPA Foundation. It's an aerobatic dream machine. The extra 330 SC was designed by the German airplane manufacturer for the sole purpose of winning aerobatic competitions. AOPA pilot editor-at-large Dave Hirschman shows us what it's like to fly. The extra 330 SC is tougher than any human. 
It's rated at plus or minus 10 Gs, and only a few of the world's most elite aerobatic competitors come close to using its full potential. So what happens when a taxi driver like me gets a once in a lifetime chance to drive an Indy car? Well, it's not pretty. Things start out well enough with some big graceful maneuvers. That's gonna start out with a barrel roll. And then things get dicey. My first attempt at a four-point roll is a fiasco. <laughs> the roll is really weird. It's a heavy breakout force, but once, the, once, the, once it's broken out, it goes really fast. Let me try this again. It's gonna do a aileron roll. The SC rolls at more than 400 degrees per second, so the horizon goes around in a blur. That is unlike anything I've felt before, the aileron. This airplane was designed for one purpose winning aerobatic competitions, and that's something that does better than anything else. The German design has won four out of the last five world contests, including the last three in a row. The SC is a beautifully crafted carbon fiber dream machine that gives pilots three-dimensional freedom. You've just got to stay conscious long enough to enjoy it. Thanks to Jeff Petrocelli of Long Island, New York, for the chance to fly this magnificent airplane. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. Look for more about the extra 330SC in a future issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. Dave doesn't usually have to work very hard with airplanes because he's a really good pilot. He just kind of puts them on whatever it is and goes, goes flying, right? right. Uh, this one I think had him working. <laughs> nice to see it. <laughs> Coming up, a world record holder gets lucky again, this time when his prop flies off. And giving your airplane a special shine for summer. We'll be right back. for being here to support Angel Fight West and the fifth annual Endeavor Awards. The real heroes in this equation are the Angel Fight passengers. Wow. See, I told you you'd love this. Welcome back. The airport in the sky is set to reopen. At the time we tape this, Catalina Island Airport is scheduled to reopen on May 3rd. The historic airport has been under reconstruction as part of a joint military exercise. A DC-3 will be the first airplane to land on the newly opened runway. Sometimes your training, experience, and proper planning save your butt. Often, there's a little bit of luck involved, too, though. You'll remember aerobatic pilot Spencer Suderman is trying to break his own world record for number of inverted flat spins. He wasn't able to breathe against the G-forces on his last attempt, you may recall from our coverage. Last week, he was headed up to make another attempt when his prop departed the airplane. He was over the densely populated San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles. He was up at 7,000 feet, proper planning, he recognized the problem and took swift action, the training experience kicking in. He just happened to be two miles from Whiteman Airport. Okay, there's the luck. Spencer glided his highly custom pits to a safe landing. He's currently looking for the prop, though. He'll make another attempt at the record. Glad you're safe, Spence. General aviation is ready to serve anytime and anywhere, including when the big one happens. The Cascadia subduction zone is a region of tectonic activity in the Pacific Northwest. The area works to stay prepared for a theoretical large and damaging earthquake that could cripple the region. This weekend, general aviation groups took part in a disaster exercise near Seattle. The groups teamed up to ferry supplies across the state as part of the drill. Read more about the exercise on our website. Here's some good news for those of you who fly across U.S. borders. AOPA is working with Customs and Border Protection on some innovative ideas and technology to make returning to the U.S. much easier. For example, CBP is about to deploy a new smartphone app to its agents that combines facial recognition and passport scanning. In a recent interview with AOPA, CBP explained how this will lead to plain side service in many cases. We needed to move to a, a, a mobile platform across the nation. Our work is in varied locations and varied environments from congestion to remote. 
uh, we knew that we had to sometimes respond to the work and bring the tools necessary to do that work. Uh, I, I'm completely excited about what our mobile program is and the different avenues that it could take to really help us accomplish our mission from both an efficiency standpoint and uh, an effectiveness stand standpoint on, on uh, security. Quite visionary from CBP leadership is we don't need to be working in fixed location and, and having the travelers come to us. General aviation, that, that is a great example where a lot of times flights will come in and if we don't have a fixed location, an officer has to show up with a piece of paper and say, oh, that looks okay. Well, you know, that is easy for the traveler, but from a CBP side, really, it'd be nice to have a little bit more security so that we could have all the information that an officer would normally have access to when they're working from a, a workstation, but put that in the palm of their hands. Couple that with if you go to a general aviation location where maybe you have to get into a shuttle and drive 15 minutes to get processed, Where's the benefit for that? So with mobile primary, it's really quite as simple as this is actually one of the exact same phones that we would deploy to an officer. The application is on a smartphone. Uh, they can enter the biographic information. And with a US citizen, it's really as simple just hitting confirm and it processes them and confirms their arrival plane side. You can read more and see the complete interview on our website. Some interesting technology from the drone world, a computer vision collision avoidance solution developed for drones, may one day make every aircraft a little safer. Iris Automation is fusing multiple sensor systems into a highly accurate vision-based system that is better at detecting traffic than the human eye. Cameras send signals to the computer-based artificial situational awareness system. It then calculates a rather straightforward geometry problem within milliseconds and it sizes up each new object in the visual field. The system calculates the object's closing velocity and trajectory and determines what maneuver is required to deconflict. It then flies the drone accordingly with no human intervention required. So this mm. is a pretty pretty exciting part of it the is. drone work that we do. We're involved in all the groups that are working on these, these, right. these issues, but could be a big boon for safety for all of aviation right. and kind of the holy grail for drones of, of detect and avoid. So yeah. very, yeah, very that, promising. That, that, is, that is very interesting. We'll see where that goes. From testing to real world operation, two big leaps forward from drones. In North Carolina, the first medical drone delivery program has been approved by the FAA. Blood and other supplies are being delivered between a surgical center and a lab in Raleigh. Meanwhile, here in Maryland, a medical team used a drone to deliver a human kidney that was then successfully transplanted into a patient. The surgeon who did that transplant is scheduled to be at the AOPA fly-in in Frederick next weekend. And finally, it's spring. Time for cleanup, including your airplane. Washing and waxing is a real pain, but there's a new process that will make your old paint look like new again. I tested it out on my old Bonanza. The paint on my Bonanza was nearly 30 years old, and boy, did it look it. But after a weekend of work, it looks better than new. Seriously. Murad Zarifkar is a scientist and aircraft owner. He turned to science to find the best way to restore an aircraft finish. Learning about this thing called a ceramic coating. I was intrigued. So you put this on and, you know, you just do it once. Like, what, what's the deal here? And again, being kind of a scientist, I was like, there's no way, right? Like, we gotta test this. We gotta develop some sort of hypothesis and, and test it and, and see what, what it actually can do. So I kind of learned how to do things and, and test the different products and methods. And it's like, this works really great. And I started doing other people's cars. And then other people wanted their cars done. And all along, being a pilot, like, we're not doing this on airplanes, you know, like we're, we're using wax and kerosene and, and all these, you know, 1960s technologies. So I looked into, you know, how, how do we do this on planes? So he figured it out. Step one, a no rinse cleaner to get the bugs and surface dirt off. Then gentle buffing with a low RPM buffer to get rid of oxidized paint. The plane has been around for a while. Um, the, the paint's gonna start degrading and it's gonna start oxidizing. So kind of, you know, your, your, your finish turns dull, so to say. Um, the, the paint gets brittle and it gets very porous, so pollution can get in, it becomes really hard to clean and it just loses its luster. At this point, a lot of people think they need to paint their airplane or, or somehow refinish it. We remove that top layer, which is oxidized, which is usually about one to two microns, and we do that through polishing. So that's what's going on in the background here. 
So once we remove that oxidized paint, we have paint that looks really, really good. And in some cases, we can match newly painted panels um, just by doing that process. Even a factory fresh paint job can stand a little buffing. So you see those? So, so you have your light reflection, and then you have little you know, legs radiating off of it. Those are holograms. And that's an artifact of a rotary polisher. So in this case, we're gonna remove oxidation, but we're also gonna refine that surface. And that's more like what we would see on a newer aircraft. That, that's the type of paint defect we uh, commonly see on there. You can see how removing the oxidation really brightens the paint. And then finally, the ceramic coats. And the ceramic coating bonds to the paint, so it, it becomes part of your paint, and it changes that top layer to where it's a lot smoother and it, it has a lot lower adhesion to, to things like bugs or oil, uh, things like that. This particular product line is sold only to professionals. And the ceramic coat will stay shiny for years with just a gentle wash every now and then. Zarifkar quit his chemical engineer job and now details aircraft full time. An airplane like the Bonanza cost about 3,000 bucks to detail, but in my case, it will probably allow me to forgo a new paint job for several years. And Zarifkar takes a great deal of satisfaction in every aircraft he does. I'm very lucky to be able to do this and travel across the country and work on airplanes. So. And so it's been about eight months since we did that process on the airplane. It still looks great, really easy to clean off uh, because of that ceramic coating. And uh, so I'm really happy with this. It, it's been great. So it not only works, it lasts. It does. It lasts for quite a while. And I don't probably put 75 hours or more on the airplane uh, uh, since then. And so it's, it's holding up well. Great news. Well, that's our program for the week. Thank you for watching. Remember to join us here in Frederick next week if you can. And we'll be back with another edition then. If you have any comments, comments, let them rip. AOPA Live at AOPA.org is the address. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.